Hey there, PRS community. Pastor Mike here. Hey, we are in Roseburg Christian Fellowship in Roseburg, Oregon. Uh, it is so special to be with you here today. We're a half hour late. Uh, I spoke too late, and it's my fault. So I take full responsibility. Again, I'm looking at our forum today. We have Bible readers from all over the world. I saw an Australian. I saw somebody from Holland. I saw somebody from South Africa. I see somebody from the Philippines, Germany. Oh, wow, look at these precious people. Ria Dalla Cruz from Philippines. It's good to see you. Joe Stone, good to see you again. Uh, what we do here is we simply read the Bible. That's what we do. We read the Bible. We're going to be reading Genesis 41, Psalm 2, Revelation 3, uh, 2 and 3 today. But before I do that, we have some special guests. We have Pastor James and his wife, Stephanie. Um, you pastor Roseburg Christian Fellowship. Tell us about uh, your fellowship and what happened this weekend here. Uh -huh. Well, here, I thought I was going to keep it pretty simple. Then you brought in what happened this weekend. <laughs> uh, Roseburg Christian Fellowship, we're, we're a body of believers that gathers around, centers on the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, our passion is really to feed the people of God, the word of God, and that as God, the Holy Spirit, transforms our life through his word and equips us by his gifts and his grace, his empowerment, mm -hmm. that, we, that we go out. And, and as we go out and occupy till he comes, which is return, return we're looking for it soon. Um, we just, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty much that simple. We just, we love the Lord. We love his word. And we want to see him impact our world. Um, until he comes. And you guys are high school sweethearts, isn't that right, Stephanie? You could say that, yeah. You guys met in high school? We did. Did yeah. you dream that you'd go into full-time ministry being uh, leading a church? Never in a million years. <laughs> and, <there you> are. <laughs> and that might be on the short end. God's <laughs> calling. What's your website? Uh, you, you can find us on our web on the web at roseburgchristianfellowship.net. roseburgchristianfellowship.net. That's Roseburg with a U uh, for the Burke, not a B-E-R, but a B-U-R. G. Correct. Correct. Very good. Yeah. So, folks, if you're in the area and you're struggling, you're looking for a church, you want a Bible based church that teaches the Word of God, and there's people coming to Christ, and there's people growing in the Lord, Roseburg Christian Fellowship. I've enjoyed my time here this weekend. And so, without further ado, we are going to read the scriptures, and they're going to help Amen. us. And so, uh, I'm going to have to get up here a few times because I want you guys to see what scriptures we're actually reading. We kind of have a makes makeshift studio here. And so right now, we're going to ask you to open up your Bibles and listen on. This is Genesis chapter uh, 41. We left off last week at Genesis uh, chapter 40. And if you recall, the chief baker, he's, uh, he's gone. He was hung. He was hung. And then the uh, chief butler forgot Joseph. He was supposed to tell the Pharaoh to get Joseph out of jail. Innocent guy didn't do his job. So now, here, watch what happens. Read your Bibles with me, Genesis chapter 41. Then it came to pass at the end of full, two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. And behold, he stood by the river. Suddenly there came up out of the river seven cows, fine-looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ugly and gaunt, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. And the ugly and gaunt cows ate up the seven fine-looking and fat cows. So Pharaoh awoke. He slept and dreamed a second time. Suddenly, seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seven thin heads, blighted by the east wind, sprang up after them. And the seven thin heads devoured the seven plump and full heads. So Pharaoh awoke, and indeed it was a dream. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men, and Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults this day. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream in one night, he and I, each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. There was a young Hebrew man with us there, 
a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream, and it came to pass just as he interpreted it. So it happened. So he restored me to my office, and he hanged him. The Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him directly or quickly out of the dungeon. And he shaved, changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that you can interpret a dream. To interpret it, you understand. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I stood on the bank of the river. Suddenly seven cows came up out of the river, fine-looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then, behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and gaunt, such ugliness as I have never seen in all of the land of Egypt. And the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the first seven and fat cows. When they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, but they were just as ugly as the beginning, so I awoke. Also I saw in my dream, and suddenly seven heads came up on one stalk, and good. Then behold, seven heads withered thin and blighted by the east wind sprang up after them, and the thin heads devoured the seven good heads. So I told this to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, can you imagine this, folks? The dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and seven good heads are seven years, and dreams are one. The seven, are th the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt, but after them, seven years of famine will arise, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine will deplete the land, so the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following, for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice, because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt, let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep uh, food in the cities. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land may not perish during the famine." I love this. Watch this, folks. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne, I will be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in a garments of fine linen and put gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried out before him, Bow the knee! He set him over the, all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphna Pa'ane, and he gave him as a, a he gave him as a wife Asanath and the daughter Poti Pero, priest of On. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Watch this. Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh the king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt. Now in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abundantly. So he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. He laid it up in every city, the food of the fields which surrounded them. Joseph gathered very much grain 
as the sand of the sea until he stopped counting, for it was immeasurable. And to Joseph were born two sons before the years the famine came. Asenath, the daughter of Potipherah, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Menashe, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Then, my friends, listen to this. The seven years of plenty, which were in the land of Egypt, ended. And the seven years of famine began to come, as jo Joseph had said. The famine was in all the lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Then Pharaoh said to the Egyptians, go to Joseph. Whatever he says to you, do it. The famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians, and the famine became severe in the land of Egypt. So all countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all lands. Now we're going to pause just for a second. That's one of the largest and longest chapters we've processed in a long, long time. I want you just to, uh, as you've read that in your own translations and listened uh, with us, just ask the Lord to show you uh, what he would really want to communicate to you, because we still have three more chapters. And I'm going to move next to uh, Stephanie. She's going to read for us Psalm chapter 2. Psalm 2, the Messiah's triumph and kingdom. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. And let us pause to reflect, and that's actually a messianic psalm predicting Jesus. So consider that. Friends, last week we opened up the book of Revelation as well, uh, and we are going to go straight into the book of Revelation now and continue into chapter 2, which Nick, our Canadian director, <laughs> will read for us. To the church in Ephesus, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, write the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary, but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yet this you have. You hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I'll grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To the church in Smyrna, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, the words of the first and the last who died and came to life. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich, and the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, 
but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. To the church in Pergamum, and to the angel of the church in Pergamum write the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Yet you hold fast my name and you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might eat food, sacrifice to idols, and practice sexual immorality. So also you have some who hold the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Therefore, repent. If not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I'll give some of the hidden manna, and I'll give him a white stone with a name written on the stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. To the church in Thyatira, and to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, the words of the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works, your love, and faith and service and patient endurance and that your latter works exceed the first but i have this against you that you tolerate that woman jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols i gave her time to repent but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality behold i will throw her onto a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her, I will throw into great tribulation unless they repent of their works. And I will strike her children dead. And all the churches will know that I am he who searches mind and heart. And I will give to each of you according to your works. But to the rest of you in Thyatira who do not hold this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you any other burden, only hold fast what you have until I come. The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations, and he will rule them with an iron, a rod of iron, as when earthen pots are broken in pieces, even as I myself have received authority from my Father. And I will give him the morning star, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Wow, those are tough words. <laughs> yeah. Man, you imagine if <laughs> churches, wow, and you just went through the book of Revelation. So you went through this. Oh, right in the middle. Yeah, well, we've been through this. Yeah. Man, oh. man, wow, Jezebel, woof. <laughs> you know, friends, keep watching. Uh, we're going to go. We're doing all the churches this morning uh, or this afternoon, rather. Yeah. And so let's put up uh, chapter three. Brace yourselves uh, and listen to this. Pastor James, chapter three of Revelation. And to the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I have come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. 
He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out their name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews but are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked i counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see as many as i love i rebuke and chasten Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches wow uh today today was straight up truth man let me take down this uh at this stage friends um let's take a few seconds and reflect ask what the spirit of god wants mm -hmm. to change in your life and what is the thing that he said to you Amen. let's take a few seconds mm -hmm. You know, for our online community, I can see a lot of names out there. Um, I would love to be able to see what God, if you're willing to share, if you're willing to share, what is the one thing that God spoke to you during our time together? Um, I'll start us and I'll go right down here and we'll watch some of the comments. Um, I saw that Joseph was unjustly treated. And there's a lot of injustice that we as believers are going through. But it's the Lord who has the future in his hands. And if we simply just trust in him, things will work out. No matter how bad this life is, and no matter how many injustices you go through, or I do, in the end, we will all face Jesus and we'll be with him forever. And so that is a huge comfort for me. Mm -hmm. Reading through that list in Revelation was very sober, I have to add as well. <laughs> so Nick, what is the one thing? Uh, to get back to that time when you first came to know the Lord and you had that 
that zeal and that desire to just that hunger for Christ to read voraciously the, the the scriptures to learn as much as you can to get back to that day just to, we all have that in our mind that day we came to the lord just to get back to that day all these distractions around us in the world just um focus on jesus and um you know discard and and stay away from any um any <clears throat> possible sin that you might have in your life and let's sanctify our lives for christ because he's going to return but get back to that first first love of when we first came to know Christ. And, and every one of us has that day in our mind that we remember. And so, um, yeah. Yeah, James, what's the one thing that you take away from these readings? Oh, for me, it's, uh, you know, so many of our problems or so many of our uh, struggles or things that God is calling us to repent from, they're momentary. Um, and when we look at the promises to he who overcomes, he who conquers. Oh, they're just eternal. Mm -hmm. The whether it be the suffering, whether it be the battle with our flesh or our selfishness, um, Jesus holds these things out as this eternal weight of glory. I mean, can you imagine? Hey, I'll sit on my throne as I sat down on my father. <laughs> <laughs> that that trumps imagine. my my yeah. little moment of, of focusing on myself and it's a big deal. And just to hold on to that and and run hard for him, put my eyes on him, and uh, because his, he's coming and his reward is with him. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. So what really stuck out to me was just Joseph's confidence in the Lord, and mm -hmm. and he replied that it's not me, but God will give you an answer of peace, mm -hmm. and just that Joseph could say confidently because he knew his God, he is a God of peace, and he will do this, not knowing what was coming. Hmm. Joseph knew the God that he served. You know, there's many more things, friends, and I, I look at some of these comments here. Um, such wonderful patience in the Holy Spirit, Dorothy. Thank you for sharing. Um, Psalm 3, verse 3, stop running scared come back to god yes yes look at some of these comments um and you know here we are we're a community from people all over the world and we simply open up the scriptures and read next week um we'll be back to our normal situation i'll also have another guest to surprise you next week and uh th these are fun we're actually in oregon we're out traveling again we love you guys so much. It was great to meet you this weekend. Some of you actually showed up at the conference. It was Amen. great to meet you in person. But for now, um, Pastor Mike um, signing off with Nick James and Stephanie here at Roseburg Amen. Christian Fellowship. So God until bless. next week, God bless everybody. God bless you guys.